let's look at side control. So Dean head here and the mind across here. Last couple of weeks we were looking at getting out of someone's close guard, which is here, a very common position. We looked at various ways, including standing up and driving the knee across. The next stage in this game plan that we have is to assume side control. So remember I said grab around here, we're trying to pass here, and then we're now here. So today's lesson starts from here. Side control. Very basic side control, which we're all going to practice, is my chest is on his chest. I have my arm underneath his neck. And I want something to do with this hand. And usually we either grab our own hand or this hand will usually cut underneath the armpit and we're just clamping on here, trying to keep my elbow in. All right, so this is the starting position. So when I say start inside control, this is our starting position. Um, I think, actually, if everyone can come a little closer, just so we're not obscuring the camera, we will show a lot of detail. So side control is all right. And I, can, I can cling as tight as I can, but ultimately it won't prevent me from doing what I want to do, which is applying pressure. So in, in today will be a lot about applying pressure. So I'm going to give you tips about how to use side control and use it in a mean way. Sorry, Dean. <laughs> okay. First of all, look at my knees. If we spin around, look at my knees. My, my knees being here is very useful. My knees being here blocks his hips. Now when um, Dean tries to hit the safe away, I just follow him and I use my knees here. <coughs> when he tries to turtle and turn away from me, I just pull him out. This, this hand here pulls him back. So this is a good exercise. We'll get back to position here. But ultimately, I'm not really applying pressure. I'm not making Dean suffer for his error of letting me pass his guard. I'm not putting anything on my mind. So how do we, how do we apply pressure? Right, pressure is force in a perpendicular direction. Okay. So the force being my top half of my body. Well, one way is I can take the knees off the ground. See, you can feel that already, can't you? Yes. All right. I don't want to be here too long because one way for knee, um, Dean to escape is obviously to hip escape and get that knee in between him and me. I've created a space. So there are times when you want to use this, times when you don't. And usually it's when this position, this starting position, isn't good enough. Dean is thrashing around, trying to escape, and I'm putting pressure on now. I want him to stop thrashing around and give me a hard time. And then I re-establish my holding position. So that's how to apply pressure number one. How to apply pressure number two is, even better, another way of applying force is to reduce the surface area. So at the moment, my chest is on his chest. It's kind of like an area around about here, affecting an area around about here. What if I made the area much smaller? My area much smaller, and then it's kind of like a needle pointing into him. This is where my shoulder comes in. So what we're now going to do is going to do a combination. We're going to go off our knees. We're going to point our head towards his hip here, which means my shoulder comes under his chin. And then we are going to go back into the position here, my knees are still off the ground. And how do you feel about this now, Dean? It's not the nicest. Not very nice, is it? <laughs> so that's what we call shoulder justice or a cross face. I'm making his face turn away. I'm also applying a lot of shoulder pressure, which is a small surface area, directly into his jaw, stroke, neck. Right? Some people tap from this. Unfortunately, I don't make them tap because I'm only little, but it's still not very pleasant. Anyway, so, the, so starting position, we're going to start here. Knees on the ground, hand underneath, other hand underneath. We're cupping. I'm keeping my elbows tight. Right, my chest is on his chest. Stage one, we ask your opponent just to thrash around, try and escape. It's, it's a bit annoying, but you can probably keep him there for a little while. Part two, I'm letting my knees come off the ground and I am applying a little bit more pressure. Now ask your opponent to sort of thrash around. It's not very pleasant for him. Final part, part three. <coughs> we are now going to, the knees are off the ground, turn my shoulder under his chin, and then drive it back in again. And I keep it there. Now ask your opponent to move around. <laughs> it's not very pleasant. <laughs> three phases of applying pressure. The most important thing is you start off in the right position. Knees on the ground, here, 
just hold it. The second phase is the knees are off the ground and I'm applying a lot more top pressure. The third phase is I'm turning away and turning in, driving that shoulder you know, like a corkscrew effect into his jawline or his neck. There's a lot of information there. Um, most of you have done this before. If you haven't done it before, team up with somebody who has a stripe on their belt and they'll be able to guide you. Okay? One, two, three. Let's go. Look at Okay, let's go back here. Now this, this little three-stage plan I offered you is a very nice beginner's entry point to assert pressure. And you can rotate and mix and match how you deal with that. Side position, uh, like a lot of mount positions, should be fluid. So for example, um, Amir gets his hand underneath me and pushes me here and I don't like it. I fluid him into another side position. He tries to hit the skate from way from here and into another side position. And I'm constantly moving. And at any stage, um, with these kind of interim positions, I decide, well, I'm going to apply some pressure and stop him moving. And that's where the shoulder stuff comes in, your feet and your knees come off the ground, etc. You're mixing and matching these so that you have a much more offensive game. All right. Let's give you uh, something to play with. Right? Uh, got people, I put you in super groups so that you will always have somebody with a gi. So if you don't have a gi, that's fine, you get to do it on somebody with a gi. If you're partnered with someone who doesn't have a gi, Find someone who does have a gi, because this is only a gi only technique. Anyway, let's look at this technique. Now, you know the shoulder thing I just showed you, where I turn my shoulder away and I drive it in? Okay, my body was like a clock. I'm turning away and going back in again. Think about that again, that kind of moving away from the perpendicular. Right? With this technique, you, you will need to focus on that. This time, my thumb goes in cold. If you can just lift your head up, here, I'm grabbing here. Don't grab too far, because you'll miss the mark, and we'll explain why in a minute. Just grab directly behind his neck. And what we're going to do is I'm going to do that thing where I'm turning my body clockwise here, in that direction here. I'm also switching my hips like this. So that's stage two. The second part, the third part, sorry, I run out of numbers when I do this, is that I have to step over his head. Drag it in. And then my head goes down, and I'm really, to make this work, I'm, I'm as about to tap. I'm continuing that clockwise journey of my torso in this direction, he's already tapping. <laughs> Where did you feel the pressure and pain? Uh, both sides of the neck. Both sides, yes, that's good. Principally, the, the strangulation occurs on this side. This is why where you hold is important. We'll spin around so you can see. Where you hold the clock. If I went too far, by the time I pulled up, I'm actually neck cracking him. I'm, I'm going on the back of his neck. And there's a possibility he, he, won't, he won't like it, but he's not going to tap for me. When I do the actual pull, you see my arm straightens up and applies like a bar across his neck here. Just at the carotid artery, exactly where you want. It's probably easier if I show you my, my sleeve and my, my nice rash guard. That's not good. That's not good. Normal side control. Now, I'm not particularly applying much pressure. This hand is free, thumb goes in the collar, and you grip. It shouldn't be too close to you, it shouldn't be too far, just around about here. Okay. Already, I'm already changing my angle, and I'm switching my legs, because I want this leg light and free and able to step over. My head continues in this direction, he already feels pressure, I'm straightening up. <coughs> the problem is, his head can move. So no matter how much pressure I apply here, he's always going to move away. That's the purpose of this leg, to, as a block, to stop his head moving. <coughs> Just bring it in close. Now you have options. You can go underneath completely. But some people have big heads and thick necks and things like that. Here is fine. This is just a block. You're blocking his head moving away. Remember, this hand here, the one I'm wiggling, is the one that's causing strangulation. The finish is I'm turning my torso away. And I'm creating the finish there. You want to see that? Okay. You're okay? Anybody want to see that again? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. I'll give somebody else a break. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I should ask. Oh. You do the other way so you can see. So, this bit you know, right? All we're asking you to do is change the grip from here, first of all, to get the thumb in the collar. He doesn't even, perhaps, uh, he doesn't even see what's happening. Now what we're going to do is I'm already turning in that clockwise direction of my body and then I'm going to switch my hip position. 
I did something slightly wrong before I sat down oh. here. Don't do that. Keep your weight on him. See, I've lifted my bum off the ground. Okay, because if I do that, Dean already thinks there's no threat, and actually it's quite easy for him to defend from. Here, there's, you feel the threat already. I'm tightening my grip here as I'm turning my head away. I'm stepping over, dragging back, and it's just to provide a block. I don't have to go all the way underneath. I'm straightening my arm, and looking down towards his feet, turning my torso, and he's already tapping. Alright, step over choke. Everyone give it a go. Stay in your super groups. And for the people, if you don't, if you have a partner that doesn't have a gi, find someone that doesn't have a gi in your group. Okay? Three, two, one, let's go. If you're new to this, you have an idea that side control is a very dominant position. And you also have some tools with which how to maintain that side position. Because it's alright having done all the hard work to get there. But if your opponent can escape easily, it's all thrown out the window. You, you want to avoid that at all costs. You want to keep there. So two, the, the two theories about how to maintain a dominant position is, number one, you attack. So hence that choke is a good attack move. So they're always defending. The other one is you find a way to put pressure on. And even better, why not use both? All right? uh, you're, you're, you're dropping in pressure, you're attacking, you're dropping in pressure, and you're constantly making them uh, on their back, putting them on the back foot. Let's look at something else. Okay, um, borrow, I'll borrow Wayne actually. <coughs> so another facet of jiu-jitsu that we, we, we focus on, especially in more advanced classes, but there's no reason why we can't do it here, is transitioning to another technique. Uh, very often, if you create an action, you get a reaction. So, for example, say I'm here, and I, I let's say I go for that technique that we did, and I'm already switching it, and he, he doesn't like it, he's starting to put, yeah, see what he's doing, he's, he's using his hand. So I could carry, I have a choice. I can carry on doing the technique I want to, and maybe he's defending that foot. Great, that gives me a chance to attack this arm. So we're gonna look at this, this particular submission. Okay, we call this Americana, and you know we call it something else. Ja Japanese, okay. So make sure you can all see, perhaps if I turn this direction, you can also see it. Right. Um, uh, people who have stripes on their belts, I expect you to go through the whole thing from side control. If you're new and you want to isolate it, you can just start here with both arms over. Both arms over. And what you're going to do is you're going to, with the arm that's nearest his head, push down his arm here. So you're forming a square. Your elbow has to be on the ground, his elbow has to be on the ground. The other arm goes under his armpit, and you're grabbing your own wrist. And what you're going to do is you're going to form, it's like a backwards paintbrush. Imagine there's paint on Wayne's wrist here, and he wants to create a line that goes here. I think that even some people call this the paintbrush um, lock. And what we're going to do is, uh, we're going to keep his wrist on the ground. We're going to keep this elbow on the ground, but I'm going to raise my elbow up. And I'm going to rotate my wrist and pull. That's all it takes. Most cases, the movement is very minimal. If you find you are cranking it really weirdly, uh, I'd suggest that your angle is all wrong and the technique is slightly incorrect. You might get there in the end, but if you're way out of, way out of position here, I mean, it means he's escaping, basically. Because most people don't just willingly put their arm there. They're thrashing around trying to get their arm in everything. All right? So the most important thing is, again, the same principle. I want to keep it there. Keep it there like this. All right? And the movement is very minimal. I want to keep my elbow on the ground here. I want to keep his wrist on the ground. I'm raising my elbow and I'm dragging it. There. That's all it takes. It's a shoulder wrench. It's very, very painful. For people with stripes on their belts, okay, I expect the whole thing. Got apply shoulder pressure. If you're doing anything to make him give you this arm. You've got to be fast. Bang. Uh, fist to um, palm, push down drive to the ground and pin it to the ground. Then okay? the other arm can enter, all right, and then slowly you do the technique. Now, a slight tip, slightly more advanced tip. If you can keep your elbow on their ear, the better. And that doesn't mean keeping it static here. You can actually drag your arm here. See what I'm doing to his neckline now? That makes it harder for him. His spine is now slightly misaligned. When you do the actual Americana, you might not be able to lift your elbow because you kind of, you're slightly out of position yourself. So guess what? We're changing the angle of our body. I'm now facing his legs and we're doing this now. It's much more effective. <coughs> right? So just a little tip for people who want to play around with it. But the basic one still works. 
Everyone got that? So work with your partners, three, two, one. <laughs>